I'd love for everybody to do this today. I know you don't normally do it. Some of you might have a hard time reading it. But grab the Bible down by your feet today. I want to specifically have you do that. Grab the Bible down by your feet today. And then in the chair back in front of you is a pen and a highlighter. I'm going to have you, I'm going to have you underline something in that Bible or highlight it here in, uh, in just a couple minutes. And um, so we're glad you're with us today on uh, Easter Sunday And so I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 1, that's on page 663. Ephesians chapter 1, it's on page 663, and I know for some of you, if you don't have your readers, it'll be too small, because I wouldn't be able to see it. I understand that. But I would love for you to pull out that Bible. I want you to underline or highlight something in there in just a couple minutes. Ephesians chapter 1, page 663. So while you're doing that, I got a question for you today. What would you like to change about yourself? What would you like to change about yourself? I mean, the first answer to that in my life would be that I didn't lose hair. (laughs) Everybody has something they'd like to change about themselves, right? Maybe you'd like to be more confident, maybe more relaxed, maybe more outgoing, maybe have less fear, maybe have less bitterness, maybe less boredom. There's very very few people in life who feel like they have attained perfection. If you feel like you've attained perfection, let's talk later. I'd like to know who you are and, and meet you. Uh, because I believe perfection is impossible. Uh, but most of us are very interested in changing, and we realize there is always room for improvement. I think in all the years in ministry, the number one question people ask me is this, why is it I can't change? Why can't I change? I want to change, but I don't know how, or I don't have the, here's the word, power to change. People are looking to change. In this difficult place of life, we realize that we might need to change or that we should change, but if we're honest, we all resist change. People, sometimes we go to seminars or conferences looking for some painless cure that's gonna zap us into life and bring change instantly. Where all of a sudden, the places that we have not been disciplined now have instant discipline. Change is difficult. Listen, I've been on a diet before for an afternoon. I've started a new workout for a week. Sometimes we read self-help books, but the problem with a self-help book is they give you information, but they don't give you power. I wanna talk to you today about power to change. Power to change. You know, this light bulb is very powerful. It brings light into dark places. Darkness is the absence of light. But when you take this light bulb, it has potential to be very bright. It has potential to light up the place you're going. It has potential to be powerful. It has a lot of potential. But it's no good right now. Because why? It's not connected to the power. It's not screwed in. And sometimes we're too screwed up to realize we need to be screwed in. Maybe. And when we do, it brings light in a dark place, right? We all understand how light works. And we're created to be light, but many of us, many times in life, we stay unplugged and unscrewed. And in that situation, we don't have the power that we need. And I've got good news for you today. Today is Resurrection Sunday. It's Easter Sunday, where we gather to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And I wanna talk to you today about the power of of change and the power of the resurrection. In Philippians chapter three, verse 10, the apostle Paul said this, I'm gonna get to Ephesians one minute. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection. The power of his resurrection. The resurrection is the most powerful event that's ever happened. History was split by this powerful event. The world doesn't want to identify it anymore. It used to be BC and AD and now it's before common era. History was defined, and I want to tell you, as much as you want, to, you want to ignore history, you can't change history. It happened. And history, with the resurrection, changed the world. And so today, today, I want to talk to you about the power of the resurrection. All right, Ephesians chapter 1. Is everybody there? Ephesians chapter 1. I want to read a couple verses to you, starting in verse 18. And uh, if there's something that sticks out to you, I want you to underline or highlight it, but I'm going to tell you one thing I want you to underline in a minute. It says this, I pray 
the Apostle Paul is praying for us as believers. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. What's that mean? The eyes of your heart would be enlightened. They would, it would turn on and light would begin to produce out of you. The eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the wealth of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of, what's it say, his power toward us. Why don't you underline that, highlight that. His power toward us. Not only is there power of the resurrection, not only does God have power, but here the Apostle Paul is praying that we would understand the greatness of his power toward us who believe, those who believe. There's power in being a believer according to the mighty working of his strength. He exercised, here it is, underline this again, this power in Christ by raising him from the dead. That's what we're celebrating today. He exercised this power that was toward us who believe by raising him from the dead and seating him at the right hand in the heavens. I want to talk to you today about resurrection power. Resurrection power. We're going to go a couple more places in the word, but um, I just want you to underline that. Someday somebody's going to pick that up and they're going to realize that there is power for them. The Greek word for power is dunamis or dynamite. Dynamite. The power that God wants to give you in your life is like dynamite. It is power to change, to blow away old things and make room for the new. The dynamite would blow out all that old stuff in your life, all the old past, all the junk that's happened, and bring new life to you. That same power that raised Christ from the dead 2,000 years ago is available for your life right now to bring change to your life. To bring change. I was going to play this video, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to. So, Joe, we're not going to play it. Jesus was walking through a massive crowd one day. I'd encourage you to go watch this. You can, you can search it. The chosen woman with the issue of blood. He's walking through this huge crowd one day. And all these people are touching him. They're all bumping up against him. And all of a sudden, he stops and he says, who touched me? And they're like, hey, everybody's been touching you. He says, no, 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 no. Somebody touched me with intentionality. Somebody touched me because I felt the power go out of me. The power to heal. And this woman who had the issue of blood for many years was healed in that moment by her faith. As she reached out to touch Jesus, power came out of Jesus to touch her and transform his life. That is the power we're talking about today. The power to transform your life. Three things I want to talk to you about with resurrection power. The first one is this. Resurrection power is the power to cancel, say cancel, yeah. to cancel your past. To cancel your past. We all have a past. We can all think back about our past. But here, the resurrection power is available to cancel your past. Your failures, your mistakes, your sins, your regrets. When I say cancel, I'm not ta talking about denying the past and saying it never happened. But cancel means to eliminate, neutralize, and offset. You ever been halfway through a project and you wish you could start over? Like started painting a room and you're like, can I start over now? It's kind of like that. A lot of people feel that way about life. I wish I could just start over. I've made so many mistakes. I wish I could wipe them out. Failures, problems, bad decisions. Everybody has regrets because nobody's perfect. I don't measure up to my own standards, much less God's. Some people can't seem to let go of their past. And as a result, they let their past control the present. They live in a state of regret. They're constantly saying, if only, if only, if only. Don't you remember, if only, if it would have happened differently. And we live that way. We want to replay history over and over. But the problem is history already happened. You can't go back and fix history. But you, you could get a, a place where it does not define your present and your future. People are continually second-guessing themselves and tortured by painful memories. I blew it, therefore I'm going to pay for it the rest of my life. God says that's unnecessary. God says it's unnecessary for you to go around with a heavy load of guilt, old hurts, and memories of mistakes. Colossians chapter 2 says this. You were, past tense, 
dead because of your sins. You were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. It wasn't cut away yet. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins. He forgave all our sins. Verse 14, he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. By nailing it to the cross. This was the New Living Translation. That's why that was different than up there. I didn't tell him that. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all your sins. He canceled, say canceled, the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. What is sin? It's really an archery term. It comes from bows and arrows. When a person in archery would shoot an arrow at a bullseye and miss the target, it was called a sin. It missed the mark. That's why the Bible says all have fallen short and missed. All have sinned and fallen short. The archery term, you have fallen short. We don't live up to our own goals, much less God's. The good news is that God offers complete forgiveness. He says he cancels every record of debt in your life. The word that describes forgiveness in the Bible, here's, there's lots of words. Some of them are like blot out, wipe out, wash away, cancel. It's completely forgotten. Jesus Christ knows the things you've done wrong, and he did not come to rub it in, he came to rub it out. He did not come to condemn you, he came to change you. Jesus himself said in John 3, verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus didn't come to condemn you, he came to save you. He says, I cancel out all of your past mistakes. How many of you remember what an etch-a-sketch is? You know, you got those two things, you got this drawing, you got this whole thing going on, and all it takes is shake it up and it's gone. That's what God came to do. He came to wipe the slate clean. The Bible says that's what God does to all the mistakes I've made in my life when I come to him. He wipes it clean. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 34, there's a proclamation where God prophetically says, I will remember their sins no more. No more. God, who made the world, forgets. He chooses to forget your wrongs, your mistakes, your failures when, it, when you come to him and admit to him and ask him to forgive you. He cancels your past. That's really good news. Some of you might say today, you might say, Jesus, I want you to forgive me of all the things I've ever done. I want to give my life to you. I want to make that commitment today. And then if you were to die tonight and stand before God in heaven and say, hey God, about that sin I committed yesterday, he would say, what sin? What sin? What are you talking about? Some of you have made major mistakes in business. He'd say, what mistakes? Some of you have gone through terrible things in relationships, and he would say, what brokenness? God cancels your past. That allows you to get on with the present. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, one of his last words from the cross were, it is finished. In the Greek, that's one word. It literally means paid in full, canceled. It's what they would stamp on a bill when it had been paid. It was stamped on a prison sentence when they were commuted, paid in full. God says, that's what I did on the cross. I paid for every mistake you ever made. So Jesus was crucified on the cross so you can stop crucifying yourself. He was hung for your hangups. That's good news. If God forgets a sin, the moment you confess it, don't you think you ought to forget it? How long do you remember a bill that's been paid for? That bill you paid last month. Do you remember that? I forget it. I don't worry about last month's utility bill. Once it's been paid, I forget it. Somebody said God takes all your mistakes and your failures and puts them in the deepest part of the sea when you give them to him. And then he puts up a no fishing sign. Resurrection power is the power to cancel your past. The second thing is this. Resurrection power is the power to conquer. Say conquer. Conquer your problems. 
The fact is, everybody's got problems. You've got them, I've got them, it's part of life. If you don't have problems, check your pulse. The, the people you don't think have problems because their life looks more satisfying, they have the same problems you do. We all have problems. Our real problem is what we do with our problem. We try to solve them on our own power and our own strength. How do you know when you're trying to solve your own problems in your, in your own strength? You're tired all the time. You're sick. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Resurrection power is the power to conquer your problems. In, in the book of Romans, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or danger? No, in all these things, we are more than what? Conquerors through him that loved us. We're more than conquerors. Through him, you are more than conquerors. Conquer, that means one who overcomes by gaining control. I've met, those, I've met thousands of people who feel like their lives are out of control. I'm a victim of my circumstance. What can I do? I'm powerless. Just about the time I make ends meet, somebody moves the ends. Right? You walk up to somebody and you say, how you doing? And they say, well, I'm doing okay under the circumstances. Somebody said, circumstances are like a mattress. You get on top and you rest easy, but you get underneath them and you suffocate. Depends on where you are. A lot of people are under their circumstances. The fact is we can't control our circumstances, but we can control how we respond to them. But you don't know my problems. You don't know all the things I'm going through. It's bad. Listen, you can have a wonderful pity party. Everybody hates me. Nobody loves me. But I want to tell you, God says we are more than conquerors. We are super conquerors that have overwhelming victory. If you put your life in God's hands and rely on the power of the resurrection, nothing can devastate your life because Jesus defines you, not your circumstances, not the issues of this world, not the people around you, but Jesus defines you. Nothing can devastate your life. Nothing can swallow you up. Nothing can destroy you. That's the message of Easter. No matter how dark the situation is, God can turn it around. No situation is hopeless. God loves to turn crucifixions into resurrections. The same power, say same power, that enabled Jesus Christ to rise from the dead will allow you to rise over your problems. Resurrection power to cancel your past, to conquer your problems. And the last one is this, resurrection power to change, say change, change your personality. Well, that's interesting. Complete this sentence for me. It's just like me to be always late. It's just like me to worry. It's just like me to never stay on a diet. It's just like me to always put my foot in my mouth. It's just like me to always blow up. It's just like me to always be depressed. It's just like me to always be angry, whatever. It's just like me. This is great. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, the Apostle Paul says this. He quotes Jesus. My grace is sufficient for you. My power, say power. power. My power is perfected in weakness. Perfected. All those things. See, you can either let those things that you don't like about yourself define you and say, I'll never change. Or you can choose to say, I want to get under the resurrection power of Jesus and give that to him. Because his power is perfected in my weakness. God wants to take those weaknesses in your life and transform you into a place of strength. God uses a two-step process to change us. When we commit our lives to Christ, that's the initial turning point. When someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a new person on the inside. He's not the same anymore. New life has begun. What happens? God says, I wipe out your past. All of it's gone. It's like starting over. The Bible calls this being born again. Born again does not mean reincarnation. It just means you get another chance. Start over. New life. Not turn over a new, life, new leaf but you get a new life. Then it's followed with a 
by a lifetime process. Romans 12, 2 in the Phillips translation, and this won't be on the screen, says this. Don't let the world squeeze you into its mold, but let God remake you so that your whole attitude of mind is changed. It's so easy to get into a rut, a routine, a rat race. The myth is this, I can't change. I've tried to change, I've worked hard, I've used willpower, I've read books, I've gone to seminars, I've listened to podcasts, but I can't change. It's just the way I am, I'll never be able to change. You're right, you can't do it on your own power. But with God's power, you can make a difference. God says, I wanna take your greatest weakness and turn it into your strength. When you genuinely approach him, spend time with him, allow his word to get lodged in your soul, it has the power of transformation. Listen, I went from a shy, young, timid man. Would never be in front of somebody. Would never be able to communicate. Bombed speech class. The power of of the resurrection transform me to take me to the call God had on my life. To be in front of you, to communicate, to lead, all the things that I could never do when I was younger. And I'll tell you why, the power of the resurrection. Because somewhere in my life, I started believing what he said about me in this book was actually true. Somewhere I started believing What he said about me, who I am as a believer, I started believing it was true. And when I started believing, I started experiencing the power of the resurrection. I started believing what God said about me, and I started believing what God said about himself. Because the world is out there to constantly lie to you about who God is, to try to steal from you who God is. The world's trying to take your testimony from you, But I want to tell you, nobody can take your testimony from you unless you willfully give it to them. There are so many things that will go bad in this world, and all of a sudden, people will quit serving God. We saw it in COVID. Many believers walked away from God when COVID came because they wanted God to be a vending machine, not their Savior. They just wanted what they could get out of it. They didn't want him. When you want him, the power of his resurrection, of his word and his spirit will transform you and take you to the place he's called you to be. It will give you the power to let go of your past as you've given it to him, that your past would be canceled. It'll give you the power to begin to conquer the problems that sit in front of you. It will actually get you, give you the power to change those things about you that you don't like. The power of the resurrection to cancel, to conquer, and to change. He took my timidity and he gave me confidence. He took my shame and he gave me peace. He broke down the walls of my false identity and built me into the man he created me to be. He took me away from wandering and he gave me vision. He transformed me by the power of his resurrection. So how do you get the power of the resurrection flowing in your life? It comes through believing and receiving. In Acts chapter one, one of the last things Jesus said was this. He said, you will receive power. Say power. 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 You'll receive dynamite power that will blow things up in your life. I needed some things to be blown up in my life to become reshaped and molded into who who he called me to be. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. That is something to receive. To receive. There's a believing and a receiving of the nature of God. Jesus said, it's better that I go away. I want to give you a helper. Jesus didn't just come to die for you, to pay for your sins, and to raise from the grave and give you new life. But he came also to leave you with power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. It's a gift to be received. To come on you. 
and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. You will witness and testify of me because the resurrection, the power of the resurrection has so transformed you and the power of the Holy Spirit has so empowered you. The Holy Spirit, your helper, your advocate, your counselor, the one who gives you wisdom, the one who's with you, the very nature of God himself to come on you, to empower you with him. He wants to give you strength. It's something to receive and ask for in your life. When you know your past has been canceled, your testimony will be your witness to the world. When you found freedom from those problems as you've conquered them, as you've let the Holy Spirit conquer them in your life, you'll be a witness that reveals the hope of Jesus. When your very life has been transformed, you'll become a living witness to the power of the resurrection. The Apostle Paul says this in 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 5. Our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in, say it with me, power. Didn't just come in word, but he came in power. Where? In the Holy Spirit. God the Father poured out his love. He sent his Son who paid the price for all of us for all of our sins, and he rose again to give us new life. And God the Holy Spirit came to give you power with, listen, full assurance. Assurance that you know that you know that you know I'm spending eternity with him, that you know you're not alone, but he's given you a helper. That you know. Our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power. So, this light bulb works because it's plugged into what we call electricity. Jesus said, you will be a light to the world. You will illuminate. You will light up. You will have power. How do you get power? The power of the resurrection comes as you stay plugged in to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps you hear the voice of God, that he loves you. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. God wants to speak to you. That's how you begin to walk away from your past and conquer your problems and change your personality because the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. So it's believing what he says about you and receiving what he is saying to you. There is power available for you today. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18 says this, for the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. The world thinks everything we're doing today is just dumb. But it is the power of God to us who are being saved. It's the power. The power of the resurrection is available to you. Then you can live, as it says in Romans 1.16, where it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Over and over and over and over, the Bible talks about believing. The world tells you the Bible's about jumping through a bunch of hoops be in a goody two-shoes. And then they want to call you a hypocrite when you're not because they don't understand. Everything in the Bible says you receive it by believing. Believing. What do you believe in your heart? What do you believe? There's many of you in the room that are believers. You've given your life to Jesus and you've experienced a new, some new things with him. But some of you as believers are still struggling to let your past be canceled. It's still trying to define you. Some of you are still struggling to let the power of the resurrection help you conquer your problems. Some of you are still struggling to let the power of the resurrection change who you are as you believe his word and you receive of the Holy Spirit. And there's some of you in this room who've done a lot of really good things in your life and you're great people, 
but you've never surrendered to Jesus. You know about him. You've heard about him. You're here today. Somebody brought you here. But you've never put yourself in a place where you've confessed and said, I believe that Jesus died for me and he died to save me. I believe in him. And in that place of belief, the Bible says you become a new person. And in 1 Corinthians, it actually says that the Holy Spirit comes alongside of that and stamps you with a guarantee that you know that you know that you know that you're saved. That you know. If you don't know that you're saved, and you're like, well, I've prayed a prayer before, but you don't have that assurance, then you got to go back to God and say, God, I, I want to fully surrender everything to you today. Don't be deceived by something you did early in your life that never led to any change. Because everything we've talked about with the cross and the resurrection leads to change. If you haven't changed, if you can't look back and say, I'm not who I was because of the power of Christ in me, I would challenge you to ask you, do you know that you're saved? Do you have the stamp of the Holy Spirit on your life? That would be an honest thing I would ask you. If you can't say, I've become a new person, I've experienced the power of the resurrection, and this is what I was like before, and this is who I am now. Don't miss the power to transform, heal, lead, and save you. Come on up, Abby. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave the same power that commands the dead to wake lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks, the same power that can calm a raging sea lives in us. He lives in us. We have hope that his promises are true. In his strength there is nothing we can't do. Yes, we know there are greater things in store we will not be overtaken, we will not be overcome. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave, the same power that commands the dead to wake, lives in us, lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks, the same power that can calm a raging sea, lives in us, lives in us. He lives in us. Greater is he that is living in me. He's conquered our enemy. No power of darkness, no weapon prevails. We stand here in victory. Thank you, Jeremy Camp, for such great lyrics. Stand with me this morning. Would you just bow your head for a moment? On this Easter Sunday, the day that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I want to ask you to receive empowerment from on high, to receive empowerment today. It starts first with believing. Maybe you're a believer here today, but you know what? You've just been kind of back to doing things out of your old nature. God says, let that thing go. Let it be buried. Don't pull it back up. Maybe today, maybe if you're honest, you'd say, you know what, you know what, Mitch, I probably have. I've just been living out of my old self again and not out of the new person he's created me to be. I wanna pray with you. Maybe you're here today and you would say, you know what, Pastor, I've never fully surrendered my life to say I believe in Jesus and experience the power of transformation in my life. I wanna tell you today, I wanna lead you through a prayer and help you with that. And then thirdly, Maybe you would say, you know what, I've been a believer, I've been living out of my new identity, but I don't know how great a job I've been doing of receiving the empowerment of Holy Spirit in my life. I wanna pray that you would receive that this morning. So first of all, let's pray. If you're here today and you, you, you're saying, I, you know what, maybe I've prayed a prayer before, but I've never experienced the power of transformation in my life. I can't say that I became a new person. I can't say that I've got that stamp from the Holy Spirit in my heart that guarantees who I am that I know, that I know, that I know that I'm saved by the power of Jesus Christ. If that's you today, would you just pray this prayer with me? You can just pray it under your breath. You can say, Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have given me Jesus. I haven't quite understood, but I know there's a place of believing I need to enter into today. I believe that you went on the cross and took all of my sin. I believe that you rose again on the third day. 
And today I want to ask you, will you forgive me of all of my sins? I believe that you are the Savior, that your blood was shed so that sins could be forgiven. And today I ask you, Jesus, will you forgive me of all my sins, all the places I have simply missed the mark? Will you forgive me today? Today, I choose to fully surrender my life to you. I believe you are the Savior. I surrender my life today, and I ask you, Jesus, will you take dynamite to my life, and you, will you blow up the old part of my life? Will you cancel my past? Will you give me power to conquer my problems? Will you give me strength to change those things about me that are not of you? Well, today, I ask you, I believe that you are the Savior, and I believe today that you have come to save me. Will you transform my life? Will you make me a new person today? I desire to be born again. I thank you, Jesus. Will you come and live inside of me? If that's you, pray that prayer right now and ask him to come in and seal you. Will you seal me? Will you give me the guarantee, the mark in my life that I've been saved by the Holy Spirit? Would I be different tomorrow when I get up than I am today? Would I just all of a sudden begin to think differently? Would I begin to look at the world differently because Jesus, you are now living in me? And maybe you're here today and you've been a believer, but yet you've been living out of your old man. Why don't you just say this, God, today I just want to acknowledge I've been living out of the old man, the old way of living. I don't know why, but I've, I've just kind of slipped back into old patterns and old ways. And today I ask you, Jesus, will you forgive me for dredging up that old guy? I want to give him back to you in this moment. I release him to you. Lord, would you cut him off of my life? Would you bring transformation to my personality? Those things that I've dug back up that have caused me to be the man or the woman that I'm not, I relinquish them to you today. I ask you today, God, would you come and would you break those things off of my life? I place my trust in you and I make a fresh place of surrender to you today and I acknowledge that you're my savior. I believe in you. I trust in you. I believe what your word says about you. I believe what your word says about me. Would you help me in my unbelief? Would you help me to believe? Would you mark me today afresh? And then maybe lastly, you need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Right now as I pray, I want you to receive Holy Spirit. The Bible says you will receive, you know, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. In Ephesians it says to be being filled with the Holy Spirit, to be continually full of Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that comes upon us that brings transformation. It's the Holy Spirit partnering with Holy Spirit, receiving Holy Spirit, that I believe the Word of God. I believe what He said about me. I believe what He says about Himself, but I'm going to receive the nature of God, the Holy Spirit in my life right now. Maybe you'd pray this prayer. Why don't you pray this prayer with me out loud? today. Jesus, I thank you that you said you would not leave me, but you would give me a helper. I thank you, Jesus, that you said to wait for the Holy Spirit who would come upon me. And I ask you today, Jesus, will you baptize me? Will you immerse me with the Holy Spirit today? Your power your strength, your hope, your nature, your life coming over me. I receive Holy Spirit in my life today, my counselor, my advocate, my help, my hope. I receive Holy Spirit today. Come upon me today. Give me power to light up the world that I would be the light that God's called me to be. I receive Holy Spirit today. Right now, just receive Holy Spirit. Father, I pray today, right now, Jesus, will you baptize people afresh? Will you baptize them with Holy Spirit? Will you immerse them with your nature? Right now in this place, God, would you fill them with Holy Spirit? Would Holy Spirit come upon them, empower them, that tomorrow when they get up and they go and they do things, when they go and be with family later today, they would experience strength, they would experience hope, they would experience power that they did not have, the power of the resurrection that released the Holy Spirit on the earth so the nature of God would move in and through our lives. Father, I pray today, right now, Holy Spirit, come upon. Holy Spirit, come upon. Just thank him right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for more of you. God, I need more of you today. I thank you that you helped me to relinquish my past to you. I thank you that you've come to help me solve problems and to conquer them. I thank you, Holy Spirit, you've come to bring change in my personality where I can't change things on my own. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are coming to strengthen me, to empower me, to give me hope. You come alongside me today. Holy Spirit, come upon me. Come on, receive him right now. 
receive him right now. I was not going to preach any of this about the Holy Spirit, but it's what God wants right now. Come on, receive of him right now. Receive of the Holy Spirit. Receive of him today. Come on, right here on Resurrection Sunday, there's no greater gift to come right now in your life than the Holy Spirit, than the Holy Spirit. Come on, receive. Abby's going to sing. You just receive for a moment. Come on, receive. Come on, receive the love of the Father. For me. Oh, amazing love, I know it's true. Come on, receive. It is my joy to all. Maybe you've never you. received Holy Spirit. Right amazing now, just say, God, I want to receive all of you. Every good thing you have for me, I want to receive. I want to receive right in this moment. That you, my King, would die for me. Jesus. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. You are my King. Come on, declare today. it today. You are my King. Jesus, you, you Jesus. Are my king. Come on, make that declaration. Jesus, you are my King. Jesus, you. Listen, if there's hunger in your soul right now, if there's hunger and you're saying, I, I want more of God, I want what he has for me today, I wanna pray for you. Before you leave today, I wanna pray for you. So I want you just to begin making your way down front. Just come right down front here. I wanna pray for you today. If you're like, listen, I understand what you're saying. I want more of the power of the resurrection. I wanna receive the fullness of God. I wanna lay hands on you this morning. I just want you to begin to come down front right now. Come on, move quickly. Move quickly, don't hesitate. Some of you are like, you know, I don't even know what that means. I just wanna come and pray for you. Nothing, I just believe God wants to empower you today and strengthen you. Come on, come quickly before we dismiss. Come quickly, I wanna pray for you. I just wanna pray for God's blessing over your life that the fullness of the Holy Spirit would be released over you. There'd be a fresh anointing to walk through the things that he's put in your life. Come on, come quick, come quick, come quick. Listen, if you prayed to receive Christ for the first time today, if you said, I, I dedicated my life to Christ, I believe in him, there's a place on your connection card you can check off to say, I received Christ today. You can drop that in one of the receptacles on your way out today to say, I made a decision for Jesus today. I made a decision for Jesus today. As you leave this morning, listen, as we're gonna begin praying for these that are here, I wanna tell you to have an incredible Easter Sunday and to have a great day. If you want prayer this morning, don't hesitate. Come up quickly, I wanna pray for you. Be blessed, be blessed. Have a great Resurrection Sunday. Amen and amen.